everywhere, every which way. People were in the streets and some were on the sidewalk. I spotted an unused payphone and I uh, gone straight towards, uh, towards the, the, the payphone that I spotted. Then I approached the payphone and then I suddenly realized the phone cord was cut in half. Then I spotted another payphone across the street and when I approached this phone, I discovered that this phone was also cut in half. I could not believe that the street's phones were destroyed by someone. I really needed to call the cops so they could help the elderly man I left behind. So now I had no other choice but to look for another payphone. As I walked the streets, I began to realize that a short Hispanic male was walking quietly beside me. I sensed he was frightened and that he needed to walk with someone. As, he, as we walked together, I came upon a block and I noticed uh, wooden panels that were raised upon in a standing position by several homeowners who were trying to fence out the bad people running wildly in the streets. Then after I observed fences of homes, my eyes uh, especially gazed upon a house, one particular house, because I seen five men in black uniforms tearing down the wooden panel. Then a black man emerged from behind some of the panel. The five men were dismantling. The black man approached the five men with his hands in the air. I think he was yelling at them and I think he said to the five men, why are you removing the panels? Then my dream brought me away from this scene and now I was in a different area. The Hispanic man was still with me. I think I was in Cypress Hills area, part of Brooklyn, New York. The Hispanic guy and I walked towards several streets that were in front of us. We walked through several streets that was in front of us. We walked towards several streets that was in front of us. Then we crossed the streets and we came upon several Hispanic girls who were hanging around a corner store. One of the Hispanic girls said to me that I had something, you know, in my nose. Then I cleaned my nose and then I noticed my face was, was wet, maybe by uh, perspiration, was wet from perspiration. Next, my eyes now beheld a payphone that stood several feet in front of me. Then I took my eyes off the payphone because I seen a heavy set Hispanic man standing behind this payphone. He had his arms wrapped across the payphone. He then told the person who had been walking with me, come over here and be with your own kind. Then the Hispanic individual I walked with now ran towards the person standing behind the phone. I left this area and now I found myself rushing to join a group of black people who were all rushing towards a building which might have been a project. Some of the people wore light jackets and I seen a black guy wearing a Kango hat. Somehow I believe I was around, like I said, Cypress Hills because I just realized that Hispanic people I seen in this dream might have been Puerto Ricans. Then I woke up. I sat upon my bed and I thought about this dream because I wondered, wanted to know in what year was it when I see myself in this dream. So I've gone back to sleep so I can journey back into this particular dream. Now I believe that I've gone back into this dream and I found myself standing by a bus stop. And within the bus stop, I see adult blacks uh, inside this bus stop waiting, uh, adult blacks in this bus stop waiting area. I believe I asked them what time it was, and I believe they mentioned the month of September to me. And that's all they told me. Then I walk up from the screen. 
The next number in this piece is the number nine. This piece is called section 10, seven, sun, dream, or S tense, seven, S and D. In the month of July 4th, 2010, I recorded this dream inside my dream book. Today, I had a very brief dream. I dreamt that I was looking upward into a nearly perfectly blue sky. Then after I spotted, after I stopped admiring the blue sky, my eyes began to notice a large white crescent sphere in the upper left hand side of the sky. And on the lower right hand side of the sky sat a half moon. And then I took notice of snake-like uh, kind of small clouds floating almost underneath the bright crescent object. And um, somehow in this dream, I, I kind of picked up that what I seen had a little bit to do with the, um, the sun and the moon that I seen when I was on, nearly on the roof and uh, prior to seeing uh, the two objects, one eclipsing or uh, nearly eclipsing the sun and the other one nearly eclipsing this, uh, the sun. And uh, anyhow, this is what I picked up. You know, it has some type of connection, but here's an illustration of this dream. Okay, so like I said, I seen the crescent and I seen the moon. Now, for it to be oppressive, you would think uh, Earth's shadow had been reflected on the, uh, on the moon, but then you see the moon here. You see the moon below. So it's kind of hard to tell exactly what these things were. All I know, it could have been the two things that eclipse, uh, you know, the sun and the moon. And here's the snake-like clouds that were moving slowly underneath the, the crescent right there. The next number in this piece is the number 10. This piece is called section 10, 8 sun dream, or S10, 8 S N D. In the month of July 9th, 2010, I recorded this dream inside my dream book. Today I dreamt that I was outside somewhere and it was dark out. I believe I was in an American city, maybe in a rural location. Next I seen trees and grass. Then I looked up into the sky and I beheld the same reddish or orange spherical object I've been dreaming about a great deal. But this time around I felt that now I was in space and I was watching the reddish object from probably a few miles away of, you know, I was in space, many, many miles in space above the earth. I believe I was watching the reddish object through a heat uh, searching telescope or maybe through an infrared device or infrared telescope because the object looked diced up and fuzzy. Then I heard a news report, a news, then I heard a news reporter cheerfully speaking about this thing in space. And uh, the news reporter voice was not known to me. The news reporter sounded like a white woman. And she said, more or less, the thing in space is called a companion sun. And it's and it comes in our so, in our space once every some odd million years. It will pass Earth. I got the impression she was promoting this reddish sphere in space as a harmless, uh, spectacular uh, space show that can safely be enjoyed by anyone who will be interested about looking up into this by looking up at this object uh, as it fly past Earth. Then I began to pick up, pick up that while I was still in space, people in my country, United States, in my nation, in my country, was now buying great deals of telescopes and binoculars so that they can take a closer look at the second sun as it approached the Earth. Before I left this Dream. I seen, I seen uh, another my nephew in his house. He's like still a baby, but he was trying to speak uh, at the age of 